I don't know if this is up and working yet. It says it's public. It says it's live. Should be good. Should be good. Okay, I don't know if this stream is actually going. <laughs> YouTube, they, they changed the interface again. And I haven't done one for a while, so if the stream is actually running, you guys okay, are gonna have to tell me. I don't know if this stream is actually going. YouTube, they, they changed the interface again. And I haven't done one for a while, so if the stream is actually running, you guys are going to have to tell me. if the stream is actually going. I think it's going now YouTube, because I see some people uh, joining the stream now. So I think there's probably people in here. Let's see. Oh, there we go. There's people that are actually in. Okay. Cool. So maybe we'll get some people actually joining up here. So hey everybody. Um, I was curious if anybody wanted to actually like play some games. Um, I know it's a little bit later and this is kind of unannounced and I just kind of just started it running. But if anyone's interested in jumping in and playing some games, I've got some decks here all set. I've got some Atlantic decks and I've got some Eternal Central decks. So I'm definitely all set and ready to uh, play some games if anybody wants to join in. Just tell me in the chat and then I'll take the uh, link for the Werribee screen and I'll drop it in the chat and uh, you guys can just pop it into your browser and then we could be off and like, running and playing a game. So I hope everybody's been doing well. Um, I've been super busy in the last like a uh, few months with all the pandemic stuff, of course, is, is like kind of crazy. I, I figured that I'd probably have more time to do some gaming and make some videos, but um yeah work really stepped up the requirement and so i've been working like these really long hours and then like every time i i'm done it's been like i've got to get spend time with like the the wife and daughter and then the weekend comes we've got projects to get done so i've not made very many videos but hey i'm squeezing in a little bit of time here just to play some games so um yeah so please someone if anybody wants to hop into a game just let me know in the chat. List it right over here. In fact, I'm going to list that right in here. I'll type that in myself. So, um, yeah, so I've been uh, still just building decks. I've been playing in tournaments like um, the Summer Derby. I just did that. And I've been playing an awful lot of games with like friends online. Um, there's been... A bunch of just like one-on-one -on -one games and another thing that's like sucked down my time is I actually got um, a new arcade machine not one of the arcade one-ups I got the one called the at games legends ultimate which is really cool because you get to actually like load all these games like these ROMs onto it so I've got old Nintendo games and Sega Genesis games and Super Nintendo games all loaded into it and I've been kind of like reliving my childhood on that thing so that's been sucking down a lot of my time too so uh, okay yeah we got let's see five viewers on right now so yeah I'm, I'm all ready if somebody wants to actually join in and uh, play a game that'd be great give something for everybody to actually watch um, or if you guys have some questions go ahead and just ask me some questions over on the side and I can like chat about that <clears throat> Melissa Innes says man I miss my Sega Genesis um actually on that note I think I might, yeah, you might see this behind me. Let me get the earphones back in. I've actually got this. This actually is a uh, Sega Genesis that, it's like a little console, 
that it already comes with a bunch of games and i actually bought this so like when i'm actually using like roms on like a pc or on that arcade machine that i've got out in the loft it's not like i'm stealing games because all the games i'm playing are pretty much like i own a legal copy and they're actually on this and they're all licensed that's at least what i was going for when i bought that <laughs> i don't know if that legally works out like as well but that that was the idea anyways it's even the same company that made the actual arcade itself so um yeah, if you guys have some questions or something, go ahead and list it over on the side. Or if somebody wants to jump into a game, I'd love to do an old school game here. And I'm ready to switch my camera to the down view so we can start going for it. Um, does, uh, I don't know. Anybody have any uh, comments about what's been going on? <laughs> I don't want this to, to be boring for you guys. Kind of want to jump into something with somebody. I was hoping that if I started a live stream here, somebody would be like, oh, yeah, let's go for it. Let's play a game. Maybe I'll show you guys what I've actually got here ready to go. So, you know. Okay, so this is my deck box of all the decks. And inside of it, let's see. So here's all the decks. And you can see that there's a variety in there. And um, I know that the screen seems backwards because Werby switches the camera around and you guys are seeing my Werby. But I've got, um, not all the decks are expensive. Some are budget, some are, um, some, some are uh, definitely expensive. I got proxies in some because I don't have enough cards to like get them all actually going. So I've got um, a copy of the deck that I think is Atlantic set. I've got Rug Crazies, which is Eternal Central. I've got, uh, that tax uh, tax wins deck that I just did a deck tech on just a little bit ago, and that's Atlantic. And I've got the Powerball one that I just played in the Derby. And then I've also got Turbo Stasis, and I've got a black-white budget aggro deck. And I've got one that's more fun-oriented, a robots black-white and a lot of artifacts deck. And I've also got a uh, red creature budget deck that I could actually play. So if anybody is ready to hop into a game, I've got a whole selection of decks here. You could just pick out uh, what deck you'd want to play against, and then we could actually start going for it, just jamming some games and give people something a bit more interesting to stare at than my stupid mug. <laughs> Frank G, what's up, Edwin? Nothing much. Frank, how you doing? Thanks for joining the live stream. And David40k says, I enjoy the old cards from my childhood, but there is no way I can afford those cards now. Are proxy cards okay? Yeah, hey, proxies are great, man. If you got a deck, I don't care if the whole thing is proxies. The only thing I usually ever ask is that you can at least tell what the proxy is. I prefer proxies that at least have something of the artwork or something on them. So like when I'm looking at it on the camera, I can, I can tell. Because when it's just a Sharpie on a land or something, it's easy to get mixed up unless that's like your only proxy or something like that. Oh, hey, my, my wife just joined. Happily Ever Arts. <laughs> What's up, cutie? So, yeah, hey, guys, be nice to Happily Ever Arts. That's my wife, Holly. <laughs> so, Melissa Innes says, what would you recommend for cards to start purchasing for people getting into vintage? Um, hmm. Okay, that's an interesting one. So, first, let me post the link for... Um, okay, that is the link for the Werby if somebody wants to jump into a game. Because, uh, let's see, David40k was asking if proxy cards are fine. So, David, if you're ready, just go ahead and click that link and pop in and we'll start a game. But, okay, now for Melissa's question, if I was going to recommend people getting into vintage, hmm. Now, vintage is a little bit different than old school. I usually like recommending that people like start into old school because all of the cards seem to have value and they all maintain their value. The thing that worries me about vintage is vintage is a format that's dominated by a lot of like older, very expensive cards and some newer cards that are also expensive, but they could be reprinted. And in order to get into vintage is different than old school because you don't have that protection of like original print, reserve list, all those old kind of things that really maintain the value of those cards. So you could literally, getting into vintage, you could go out and spend you know, a couple hundred or a thousand bucks getting like a nice big pool of cards. And then they release a new master set and they put in Jace and they put in Tarmogoyf and they put in Fetchlands and they put in all this stuff. And then all this money that you spend getting into vintage just kind of goes away. 
So that's a risk that you're going to have right off the bat. Um, Wrath of Wood says, hey, dude, what's up, my, What's up? Good luck. So, yeah, so, hey, guys, I'm just waiting for somebody who wants to actually join in and actually play a game. If any of you do, just I got the link posted in the chat there. Click the link and join me, and we'll work it out and figure out what kind of deck to play, and we'll go for it. So back to Melissa's question. Um, for getting into Vintage, you're not going to want to like try to get too widely spread. You're probably going to want to like focus on a deck that you think you actually want to play a lot. So what I would definitely recommend, Melissa, is go ahead and proxy, play a lot of the different decks, and get used to like how they play, how they combo out, how they battle against people, because there's probably going to be a few of the decks that really like get your juices going, get you interested in the way that that deck actually plays, because you don't want to spend like hundreds or thousands of dollars on a deck and then decide after like several games like you know I'm just you just don't enjoy it right it's just too much money to spend to like learn that after the fact and then you're stuck having to like trade or sell all the cards away to get something else so I would definitely go ahead and proxy up try the different decks see how they interact and then decide if that is like an archetype you want to actually get into and put that money into um and vintage is also one of those things like people don't generally play it very casually anymore even though that was like a really fun way to do it people just don't like they either don't want to play against a vintage deck because everybody's afraid of losing or they go in with something that's very net deck tier one spiky and so like if you don't have a deck that's at that kind of competitive level then it's like people just don't even want to play so that that's a really unfortunate thing about it which kind of means you kind of just got to start right at the top you know just go straight into a deck and that's that's highly competitive and then actually find people that are willing to do it with you okay so derek rushing says hey i only need a time walk to finish my set of power would you advise getting now given the market time to possibly implode or get it in the future okay that's a good question so buy cards now or later now if you would ask me that two months ago I was actively telling people like, yeah, this pullback is a great time to actually buy cards. In fact, when we started the pullback a while ago, um, I, along with some of my other friends that also do YouTube, they, we were all saying like, hey guys, this pullback is probably a really good time to pick up cards. I actually thought it was going to last a bit longer. I suspected when the markets all pulled back and the virus hit and you saw equities and stuff dropping, I thought, especially when people were losing their jobs, I thought there was going to be a lot of people forced to sell. Then a bunch of cards coming into the market, which would depress prices and make it easier. I'm kind of surprised, honestly, to see the cards starting to go up in value so much. But I guess that's just an indication that there's just a lot more people that already own those cards and don't really want to sell and don't have to sell. So it's kind of like the stronger hands already have it. In this kind of environment, after seeing what I'm seeing, my gut tells me now is probably a better time than later to pick up the cards. Because in an environment like now, where like literally 30% of Americans are like out of work and like one third of mortgages are not being paid, right? I mean, this is not, you know, stocks are only up because there's money printing going on. So it's bad situations everywhere and card prices are up now, which tells me that there's some very strong hands holding them and they're probably not going to drop a whole lot more. That's my thought anyways. So Taco, there's my daughter even joined. So I got my wife and my daughter both uh, joined into the live stream. So Brent Quinn says, what's up, Ed Edwin? What's up, my brother? Hey, what's up? <laughs> Good to see you, Brent. So for anyone new that just joined, um, I'm really hoping that somebody actually wants to play a game. I got a bunch of decks here all ready to go. There's budget decks and there's expensive decks. Some of them are Eternal Central. Some of them are Atlantic. There's a variety though. They're not all like real expensive decks. And if you guys want to use proxies, that's perfectly fine. Just, I've already put the link there for the, the Werby to, you can click it and just join the video and start doing a game with me. Just come on in, man. Let, let's play. So let's see. Uh, oh, my, <laughs> my wife's letting the cat out of the bag that it's my birthday tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'm an old man. Here comes the old man jokes. I can just see those actually coming. So while I wait for somebody to join to actually play the game, um, I, I could just sit here and ramble about the economy. <laughs> if you guys, if you guys don't like, start asking questions. 
do you want me to talk about the economy? Because there is a lot. I can ramble for a long time. Like, oh my gosh, silver falling 15, 14% today. That was crazy. I did not expect that. <laughs> Brent Quinn, 33? Nope, nope, I'm not 33. I'm actually older than that. But thank you for that compliment. I appreciate that. Nick, it's your birthday too. Tomorrow? Your birthday's tomorrow or today? Happy birthday, Nick. That's awesome. So um, going back to, uh, was it Melissa's question about, oh, oh, you're part of the 812 gang. Hey, August 12th, that's awesome. Um, hey, did you know that August 12th is actually the one night of the entire year when there's apparently the most uh, shooting stars in the sky because we go through a meteor shower that peaks right about that time of the year. So that's actually a really cool thing for the people that are right around that age. <laughs> yeah, my wife turns 21 every single year. <laughs> so um, Melissa, um, if you follow my channel, I'd say there's a good chance you're probably into old school as well because I haven't been doing very many vintage videos for a long time. I would say old school is a much better thing to invest your money in um, which also has the side effect of possibly getting you some cards that are good for vintage, you know, picking up dual lands, picking up power, stuff like that, maybe some workshops. That might be a better way to go because so the thing I like about old school versus vintage is when you put money into old school, all of those cards, at least to some degree, really maintain their value. So you could literally like play old school for like a year with like maybe just one deck and then you get sick of that deck and then you put it aside for a while and then you come back like a year later and like unlike standard in these other formats that rotate out, the, the format's still being played, the cards still actually have value, and if you decided you wanted to play something else, you can easily just trade or sell those cards into the other deck archetype that you actually wanted to play. And so what, what I think is a really cool plan is like, you know, because nobody can go from like nothing to like tens of thousands of dollars to build a legit tournament legal vintage deck out of nowhere. But what you can do is you can get like a $150 old school deck together. And then maybe that $150 old school deck, and then maybe say it was a white deck. And then maybe you get your first like um, plateau and you add that in. So you can do like some bolts, then a couple mountains and you get another plateau. Eventually you got a play set of plateaus. Then maybe you get a Wheel of Fortune. You kind of start upgrading the deck, like splashing colors in. The whole time that value of that deck is climbing, climbing, climbing. And so you started with like a $150 white deck. And then like eventually that deck is now like worth like $1,000 or something like that. And now you look at it and think, I'd really like to switch this over to be a green deck with Berserks and dual lands to play some black or something. So you sell all those and transfer into a green black deck for a while. And then you add in like maybe some beta dark rituals and then you add in like a beta hypnotic specter you start doing upgrades and eventually your deck's worth like two thousand dollars then maybe you swap into something else and so you can keep on taking that investment that money and you can keep on moving it around from one deck archetype over to another deck archetype the whole time you're building up what that wealth is for that actual deck you're playing the format getting to see different decks and then eventually maybe once you've got power cards and stuff then you can just sit back and be like, okay, um, I just need to get myself a play set of Force of Wills, some fetch lands, maybe a Tinker, and now I can go play like this blue deck in Vintage. Like suddenly you'll have like enough cards to actually do something like that. So that's not actually not necessarily a bad way to get into it. So let's see, uh, Tyler Moran says, hey Edwin, I'm thinking of buying some original dual lands. Can you give me some tips and things to look out for and not to get ripped off? So Tyler, could you add a bit more details? Um, are you looking to get the dual lands so you can play or are you getting the dual lands for investment? That's a very different thing because um, you know, the, the answer is kind of go two very different directions there. But um, dual lands are definitely, I've always considered those the currency of magic. And I've, I've had lots of conversations with a lot of people about that, you know, and um, I literally do chat with like Rudy like almost every single day and we say the same kind of like thing when we're talking back and forth. In fact, that topic got so old, we talked, stopped even talking about that because it was just like, yes, this is like, this is solved. Reserve list is not going to go out of, it's not going to be disbanded. 
The reserve list cards are never going to be printed again. The dual lands are just currency of magic. These old cards are always going to have value. So, so let's see, Tyler. Okay, he's playing with them in commander. Okay, so you are going to play with the dual lands. Um, so if you don't want to get ripped off with the dual lands, the best thing you can possibly do is connect with somebody who has them in real life, who's close to you, so you can look at them really close. And I want you to learn how to recognize a real original magic card. Because if you get some of the right tools, like a jeweler's loop, it's like a little um, microscope and with a, with a light on it and stuff, and you learn how to look for the print dots and you know how to check the back and you get used to the feel and the gloss of the surface and stuff, you're not going to get ripped off with, with a fake card. Now, of course, there's always a possibility buying stuff on eBay that the card ends up being fake before you get it. But now you're kind of relying on eBay's feedback system. Like, don't buy from someone with real low feedback. Buy from really re reputable sellers or, or from people um, like vendors online. And there's even Facebook groups you can get involved in with where, you know, people will vouch for other people that um, are like known within the community to be like really good. But the start... Starting thing you've got to do is you've got to learn how to recognize what is an actual real card to make sure you're not going to get ripped off. And then you got to get kind of just used to the prices. And what another thing to think about is like, let's say I had some dual lands and you have some dual lands and like um, you want to get to like underground seeds or something like that. Like if you tried to offer me like a bunch of like non old nice cards just for like you know my dual lands i'm not going to do it but if you offer to trade dual land for dual land players will do that so you they will swap like that so like if you can afford like a savannah here and you can afford a taiga and a plateau or something like that then eventually you can swap like a couple smaller dual lands into the one of more expensive like blue colored dual lands that's a way to kind of work your your way into the direction that you're wanting to go so i don't know it's another way to look at it as well Okay, so Brent says, do I have any old boosters that I haven't cracked? Have I opened any double masters yet? So um, I think all the old boosters that I had, I've cracked. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, I've, some of you might not know, I actually appear on another guy's channel sometimes, a guy called Open Boosters, much more famous channel than mine. And he actually opens up packs of beta and unlimited and revised and stuff like that. And sometimes he has me appear there as a guest because he's a good friend of mine. And so I'll be there cracking packs with him, but I, I don't own <laughs> any of those cards and I don't get to keep any of those cards. So the times where I've had older cards to crack open, I've pretty much done it in like posted videos. And I've actually still got boxes and stuff. Like up there, if you can see on the shelf, that's actually like a box of beta, um, like the wrapper and stuff like that. Even like, you know, you can still tell um, that it's actually beta on. And that, that's one that we opened like with... Uh, uh, all the YouTuber guys, we were all together and we opened that up and that video actually blew up and stuff, but it was really frustrating what was actually in the rare slot. I don't want to do any spoilers if you guys haven't actually seen it. So, hey, Nick just donated $8.12. August 12th. I get it. That's funny. So in case anyone doesn't know, any money that's donated to me in Super Chat, I literally turn that right around and send that straight to Make-A-Wish Foundation and I match it. So I'm going to match his $8.12 for a total of $16.24. <laughs> My aunt tells me that, that too. I've never seen any meteor showers, though. The one time I caught your stream and it's up uh, is our birthday. Happy birthday from Montana. Thanks, Nick. That's really cool of him. Is that the dude with the gloves? Oh, okay, the Wrath of Wood is asking. Uh, yeah, Open Boosters is the guy with the gloves. He's the guy that, like, the, uh, years ago opened up that Alpha Lotus, and his hands are all shaking, and you can't see his face in that video. All I saw was his hands, and, like, he's just freaking out, and he's, like, shaking super bad, and, like, when he sets the card down and stuff, that's, that's Open Boosters. So, hey, if anybody wants to play a game, I would love to actually play a magic game instead of just sitting here gabbing away with you guys because, I don't know, I want it to be interesting content and I feel like playing a game uh, with someone on the live stream is probably going to be a lot more interesting than me sitting here gabbing at you guys. Although, until somebody wants to do a game, keep those questions coming. In fact, let me type that in again.
Okay, then I'll grab the link here. There we go. So, uh, let's see. Wheel of Fortune is good, Wrath of Wood says. Let's see, did I, did I miss some? Okay, so Melissa asked, would it be good to start with revised or unlimited? Um, I don't know, Melissa, if you were talking about dual lands or what specifically. Um, I would, if you're talking about those kinds of cards, I would start with what you can afford because I personally feel like you'll get more value if you actually begin with buying cards that you'll actually use and you'll enjoy because that'll keep your passion for magic kind of growing and you'll get to use them in decks and stuff like that. And again, like people don't often want to trade big cards for small, you know, worthless cards. They, they, you know, like a lot of $1, $2, $5 cards, but they will trade dual lands for dual lands. And if you have multiple revised dual lands, people will trade an unlimited dual land for a revised. So you can work your way up the value tree doing things like that. Old cards for old cards. And the closer they are in value, the more willing people are to do a swap or something like that. So... I think you'll enjoy yourself more if you actually buy cards that you you are excited to play that are within your budget and try to like get enough of a base so you can actually build decks and enjoy the format versus just going for one or two really expensive cards and then proxying like everything else, right? You'll probably get more bang for your buck out of that. Okay. So Derek says, what cards are you speculating on in the market for these days? Um, I don't do an awful lot of speculation. Um, so my thing is mostly like gaming. I, I play the game a bunch and all, all of my content and the design of my whole area here is all about building decks and playing. I do actually enjoy uh, the topic of investing and speculating though. And I talk to the other YouTubers an awful lot. So I usually have a pretty decent idea of like what is worth speculating on. And I do think that there's a lot of corner case old school cards that aren't really, um, that are undervalued at the moment. I'll give you an, a couple ideas. There's um, now that collector's edition and international collector's edition are actually allowed in most old school formats that are ran by people, not the official DCI. Since those are allowed, <clears throat> there's a lot of those that carry a lot of value. And you got to remember that the collector's edition cards, the commons, it doesn't really exist. You know, a collector's edition lightning bolt is literally just as rare as a collector's edition black lotus, right? So I think that there's a lot of value to be had there in some of the very heavily played staples. Like, for instance, I picked up, I can actually even show you. Give me a second. Let me grab a binder. Okay. Most of my expensive cards are actually in decks, but I do have a binder here where I keep my cards, you know, that are not currently in decks. And let's see. Somewhere back here towards the back. Okay, they're right there. See those? Those are the Sedge Trolls. Now, I picked up this playset of collector's edition sedge trolls and these guys were really not very expensive at all i think i literally bought these for like six dollars each or something like that but like sedge troll like disco troll is a very big staple deck in old school format so i couldn't believe the price i was getting when i snagged these and there's really not very many of them out there uh, the collector's edition cards, I think there was like 9,000 of the collector's edition and like 5,000 of the international collector's edition. It's like only like 14,000 printed. You guys, that's crazy rarity. I mean, Revised, for instance, has I think 220,000 copies of every single rare is printed and revised, right? Like 220,000 copies compared to 14,000 in collector's edition. And people really love that old look. So you could go pick up collector's edition cards like a collector's edition regrowth, balance, lightning bolts, sedge trolls, cards that are like very commonly played, but their current value right now is low. I think those would be great investments because you can use them in your deck. They look fantastic. And I'm sure that their value is going to keep going up because people are really playing them more and more often now. <clears throat> 
So Melissa said, sorry, I wasn't thinking specifically with dual lands, but in general. So, okay, so that's a good question, Melissa. You were talking about, is it better to go unlimited or revised? It kind of depends on the card. Um, like take a card like, like Farmstead, something like that. You know, Farmstead is a rare. Um, there isn't a ton of them printed, but it's a terrible card, right? The only people that would care about a card like Farmstead are collectors, right? But if you take a card that is heavily played, something like a Mana Vault, Demonic Tutor, Lightning Bolt, Dual Lands, Disenchants, those cards have a lot more potential to have like value down in the section of the revised set because the really useful cards that people are actually going to play. If it's in the revised set, but it's a card that like doesn't really see very much play, just forget about it. Like if you're trying to build value and stuff, like just only get those because they're cheap and you're trying to fill up a deck. If you're trying to kind of build up that value tree, you kind of start from unlimited beta alpha kind of like that direction right if you're trying to get like eventually build that 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 wealth like a, a beta disenchant carries a decent amount of value because yeah sure it's a comet but it's like almost every old school deck out there runs like four beta disenchants and they're just considered like you know some of the best removal in the format and just very actively used so a revised disenchant it's worth more than nothing you know, but it's not, not by a lot, but you'll have some value in it, but unlimited alpha beta. Oh yeah. Ton more value. So yeah, it really depends on the playability of the card. The most commonly used cards, five star cards. That's what you want to target if you're going for value. So, uh, nobody wants to jump into a game. Come on. We've got to have a taker. Someone's got to jump into a live stream game here to play. <laughs> I thought for sure we'd get some people wanting to jump into a live stream game. So let's see. Uh, Derek says, speaking of CE, I saw a listing for a CE Lotus that ended yesterday at $2,000. That is more than I paid for an unlimited Lotus two to three years ago. That is crazy. Yeah, it honestly is crazy. Um, I think before I repurchased my final Lotus, and I say final because I'm not going to sell this one over my cold dead body right <laughs> but before i purchased this last one i had bought a mint collector's edition lotus and i think i paid 450 or 500 dollars for it and when i was about to buy my unlimited lotus i sold that collector's edition and then bought my actual unlimited edition uh black lotus but i sold the collector's edition for around 500 and i bought my unlimited for like 3500 because i had a signature and everything and i really wanted a christopher rush signature and just like you're saying now that that collector's edition lotus just shot up but remember what i was just mentioning earlier the collector's edition and the international collector's edition they're pretty rare sets there's not very many of them out there and then as soon as they were actually deemed legal and accepted by the community in so many ways and they look so good they look like beta or alpha especially when they're inside of a sleeve that you know people just started just flocking to them and so, yeah, I mean, that that $2,000 for a CE Lotus sounds crazy, but dude, it's legitimate. I mean, it's that that is really where the market price is at. And I don't think it's going to be having a big drop like anytime soon. So um, Sean Hansen says, I finally got three sets of Power 9, but I stopped playing old school. Should I keep them if I start playing again or should I just sell them? Uh, wow, three sets of Power 9. That's that's amazing. Congratulations, man. Um, should I keep them if I start playing again, or should I sell them? Well, I'll tell you my take, Sean. I mean, it's you, know, you, you are your own person. You can make your own calls. But what I chose to do is I only have one set of Power 9, and I have one set of Dual Lands. All the big, expensive cards, I... I only have copies, extra copies of the less expensive cards like Disenchant, Strip Mine, Mishra's Factory, stuff like that. Uh, the big expensive cards, I only have one set. And here's what it came down to for me. I wanted to build decks and play the game. So I looked at it and said, what does it benefit me having an extra Mox Ruby? I would rather have, you know, three Abysses and Nether Void and a Tabernacle or something like that. Because look at how many more decks I can build if I have those. So I took the value out of like extra sets of some of those most popular cards and I spread it wide 
into other cards that I can actively use. And that's why I'm always building all these different decks for the channel because like I have a pretty wide set of all these old school cards and I'm always building decks for those. And I really enjoy that. For me, that, that's where the fun basically is. If you're going for investment though, that's a very different thing. If you're going for investment and it's long-term investment, you probably want to get the highest grade cards that you can afford and the most popular ones out there. Like graded alpha or beta, power nine, that kind of thing, like go for those. If you want long-term investment, the biggest gains, it's that's where those are at. Because like, it's like, you know, think about baseball cards. Like everybody's like, oh my God, you have baseball cards. You have Babe Ruth. It's just like the first thing people would think of, right? Because that's all that people actually know about it. But there might be, here's another baseball guy. He was a great baseball player. You know, he wasn't as good as Babe Ruth, but he had a fantastic career and his card is very old. It's very rare, but it goes for like a hundred bucks, you know, because just nobody knows. Nobody it doesn't have that craziness about it. But it's like when you think about magic cards, everybody's like dual lands, reserve lists, power nine. There's certain ones that are in people's minds. And those are the ones that are going to command the most money. But it's like exponential, man. I mean, if you if you want to see the value increase, just going from like a graded eight alpha black lotus to a graded nine five alpha black lotus is just one and a half points up but the price difference is astounding right and going from a played unlimited black lotus to even like a graded eight alpha huge price difference so if you're going for value you got to go for the biggest name cards and you got to go for the be highest ones you can afford if you're going for play then my opinion is spread it wide right and just kind of go for enough cards to allow you to build decks that you're going to enjoy playing. So Sam says, Hey Edwin, I saw your video over MTG studio collection tracking and I made uh, the purchase. Thanks for the video. Oh, cool. So tell me, Sam is MTG studio working for you. Um, the reason I use MTG studio is when you do all these other collection tools, they don't know the difference between like a foreign black border city of brass and a Chronicles city of brass. And that's not the same thing. <laughs> those, there's a massive price difference between those. And I want my collection tracking tool to pay attention to those kinds of minor differences. An Italian Legends Mana Drain from an English Mana Drain, it's like twice the price for an English Mana Drain, right? So I definitely want my tool to reflect, you know, what card, what set, what condition kind of thing is. And MTG Studio is like the only tool I found that really makes that kind of distinction. And if, and if all else fails, I can at least type in a note, you know, for what that card is, right? So again, if somebody is interested, I'm dying to play some games here. I got all my decks. If anybody is uh, willing or wants to actually join me to play a game, just let me know. I'll post the link into the chat and then you can join me and we can play. Oh yeah, the price tracking in MTG Studio is definitely odd. Like I don't use it for price tracking. now. The guy who made MTG Studio, I actually even did an interview with that guy and, and spoke to him about it. And he had some big plans on how he was going to start importing prices from TCG Player, I think is what he was going to import them from. And he even sent me some beta versions of some of his next updates and kept on telling me to try to update it. And I would keep updating my collection. And like it just, it never got the price right. Like it always had like my, my beta mox jet listed for like 50 bucks. And I'm just like, Dude, no. <laughs> no, this is not right still. And I think he just kind of gave up on it. So yeah, I don't use it for price tracking at all. For price tracking, I use a program called Echo MTG. And cause like my collection is like, it's like over 36,000 cards now or something like that. It's just way too many cards to track. So I take the most expensive cards and I put those into Echo MTG. And then that even like alerts me when cards like go up or down like a ton and I can always just log in and like look at the actual price. In fact, you know, I could probably actually bring that up and show you guys if you guys want to see what that's like. Let's see, games that, price tracking. Okay, I'll give it a second to actually log in. Okay, now I'm gonna bring that over to this window. This is the tool I actually use. This is Echo MTG, and uh, you guys can actually see the value of the collection.
kind of over time what it's actually doing. So this was like the last big spike that was happening when all the cards were taken off. And uh, then it mellowed out for a little bit and then it hit an even bigger spike and it peaked out. My collection was about 141 for the cards I was tracking. And then it got real volatile there for a while. And I think the tool itself was a little broken here. I think this one actually stayed, should have stayed flatter. And now as, as Rudy was making videos, you can see it's like spiking up again, which is kind of interesting. And then you can just click on this over here for inventory binder. And if you click on like today, like here is all the most expensive cards in the collection. And you can click on this column and you can see in the last seven days, which of them have moved the most. So this beta mana barbs has gone up $272 in like the last, uh, sorry, it's gone up 243% in the last seven days. So, and from my, I, yeah, my purchase price was nice and low on this. So there's good gains on that one. And, but this is like a really nice tool. You can click on MTG card market here and here it's all like separated out by like you know you can see the sets and then the, the latest cards in those sets and then how they're actually doing and if you go on sets expansions now you can see any individual set here in fact if i grab the bar where is it here and i go all the way down to the bottom and say we want to click on like beta so this is the price for like an entire set of beta one hundred eighty three thousand dollars and then you can see all the relative prices here for all those individual cards and when you click on those individual cards the Lotus probably isn't a great one to track because there aren't enough sales to make it a worthy thing to actually track. So let's actually go to a different one to show that. So if you go to card market, scroll down a little bit here. Let's go to Oko. That's a good one. So see how much smoother the actual chart is on this. That's because there's a lot more transactions of buys and sells and stuff like that. So you can see the actual relative prices. And this is where Oko, probably right about here, is where he got banned in a lot of formats and he's just been dropping ever since. You notice that there's a yellow line up the top and then there's a white line below and I can turn that off because that's the foil version. So I can just look at just the normal card price if I don't want to look at the foil version. Or I can turn that back on and I can change the time scale so I'm only looking at like more kind of recent price trends. So anyways, yeah, I think that's a it's a really fantastic tool for for tracking prices. Um, Echo MTG. I just, I, I love that for the price tracking, but I do all my inventory with MTG Studio, if that actually makes sense. Okay, so I missed some comments here. Let me go look at those. What format? Oh, oh, CEDH Nexus. Hey, we got someone who wants to play. Okay, so CEDH Nexus. I have old school, I have Atlantic decks and I have Eternal Central decks, I have budget decks, and I have expensive decks. So any one of those you wanna go for. In fact, I can show you the individual decks. Should proxy up a deck sometime? Oh, wait, <laughs> you don't have one ready right now. <laughs> I was hoping you did. You don't have any decks ready? <laughs> I have a vintage deck also. Um, I might have to like swap some cards in because I think it might have, um, uh, but it might not have all of its cards there. Do I still have mono green? Uh, it's not built at the moment. Um, I have a mono red built at the moment, a mono red budget deck that's all set up. But you guys, like, I'm constantly building and tearing apart my decks. The ones that I have at the moment are the decks that are right here inside the box. And they are uh, the deck, Rug Crazies, um, that tax... Uh, land tax winds of change deck and then um the powerball deck that i played in the derby and then temporal stasis and then this is a black white aggro deck with some uh removal and this is a blue white robots creatures deck and this is the mono red deck and so this one's a budget deck and this one's a budget deck uh the rest of them are not but they're various formats like ec and atlantic paul mueller E.T. Me never loses when he's wearing the Guinness hat. Paul, we've got to hang out. I've got to have you over sometime. I was just talking to my wife about when I can actually hang out with you. Um, Paul, do you have a deck ready to play online? I'm trying to get a game going here with somebody, but nobody seems to have a deck ready to play. So everybody just staring at me, gabbing away like an idiot. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so, um, anyways, yeah, the, uh, the investing for the old school and, uh, in all, all the magic cards right now, I think we just missed a really, really good window to buy in at fantastic lows for anyone who hasn't been buying cards for a while. And because it, just like Rudy said, man, you guys, you could even see it in the Echo MTG app that I just brought up when I was showing the price chart. Cards are spiking now. They're, they're starting to take off again. And, you know, we can all guess at what the reasons are. Like maybe it's because of stimulus money. Maybe it's because people are pulling money out of other investments and throwing it in. Ah, oh, Paul has a deck with no, for the proxies is fine. Paul, go get a webcam. We got to play, man. It'd be so awesome to play a game with you. Just go find a webcam and plug it in. But, um, so yeah, it's, uh, the, the prices are definitely taking off. Um, I don't think that's going to stop at the moment. And, uh, yeah, the reason is that I didn't even honestly expect it to start taking off right now. There's obviously more strength in the, in the market. Um, KW says I'll pay. Did you mean to say you'll play? Um, there's obviously more strength in the buying market um, than what I or the other YouTubers were expecting because the inventories have just been shrinking down and the prices are starting to spike up. Um, all right, KW says he'll play. Okay, KW, let me post the link for joining me. It's right there. Okay, so cool. We got someone that's gonna hop in and actually uh, play. So I'll give you five minutes. Okay, five minutes, you'll hop in. That'd be great. Um, so I wanna know about what cards you guys are actually buying. Uh, please list it there in the chat. Are you guys, Are you any of you that are in the call right now, are you speculating on any cards? What are you investing in? Um, have you been pulling your money out of the market? Have you been buying any certain stocks? Anything like that? Um, have you been looking at doing real estate or do you guys think real estate is going to start dropping in price? Um, I'm personally pretty bearish on like most of those things. Like I think stocks are going to keep going up because the Fed is just printing money and like all that money is making its way into the market. But like everything else is a little bit risky. I heard uh, from sources that I do trust. Um, there is actually like 30% of Americans right now are late or um or have not paid their mortgage for several months so that's that's amazing to me and i can't believe that something like that is happening right now and we're not starting to see like massive defaults coming into the market for housing how can that be there must be just crazy things going on like one third of americans not paying their mortgage and the housing market hasn't started to fall yet that's just crazy to me i don't know how long that can last Okay, so someone somewhere, I like the name, says Dark Rituals. Uh, which Dark Rituals? Uh, but he's a weird collector. A Wrath of Wood says, the last card I bought was Space Godzilla DC Foil. How'd that work for you? I hope you got a good price on that because I know those fell quite a bit. Um, CEDH says he's buying Shocklands right now. That's probably not a bad idea. Um, I know Wizards is definitely set to keep reprinting those, but if you get them at the right price and they don't reprint them for a while, then you can definitely make a good investment there, I think. Let's see. So, Psychosen71 says he's been buying duels. Look at with Apple Split and Tesla Split. Really? So you had a bunch of stock in Apple and Tesla. Wow, that's fantastic, man. Congrats on that. I told my family way back in like, what time year was it? It was something like 2002 or three or something like that. I started really pushing my family like, you guys need to go buy Apple stock. They didn't listen to me, unfortunately. Really sucks. <laughs> um, so Psycho, Psy, Psy Chosen 71 says a lot of foreclosures and evictions in Tennessee. See, that's what I'm expecting. With with all these defaults and mortgages, I'm expecting way more foreclosures and evictions. I don't I don't know why it's not a ton higher. That's that's amazing to me. Um, C E D H Nexus says I'm also I have also been picking up foreign black border playable cards. I think that's a great idea, honestly. 
Um, there's a lot of foreign black border cards that people were like ignoring for a while. And now since alpha and beta is like so high and even collector's edition, a lot of them are getting up there. People are in fact moving to foreign black border. Uh, so if some of them are cheap, I do think that's a good investment, honestly. Um, they're about to rotate now. They're in as low as they're going to get. Hmm. Interesting. Tragic Slip says, hey, how's it going, Tragic Slip? Silver and gold. Yes, today is a great buying opportunity for silver and gold. 14% down for silver and like 5% down for gold. I mean, if you were looking for a window to jump in, today was probably it, right? So tragic slip, I've been hoping that somebody could actually hop in and play a game with me. I got one other guy that said give him five minutes and he might come back and actually play a game, but I've got a bunch of decks here. I'm all set. I'm ready to play if you want to actually jump in and play a game. So tragic slip thinks that silver is going to take out 40 bucks. Um, oh, I think it's going to go higher than that personally. I, I really do. I think it can not only take out its $50 2011 high, I think it could shoot way past that, honestly, because the, the money pool is so much bigger now than what it was then. There's so much more money that's been created. So it's like the same amount of stuff, but more money translates into a higher price. Um, Sean says he has a mono green budget deck, but he only has access to a laptop. Hey, Sean, see if you can get it set up, bro. It's like, try to like get that oriented. We can work with it. I'm itching to play a game here, man. So yeah, if you can get the camera at a good angle and stuff, then come on in. Uh, KW says the link is not working. Okay, let's see. Try. Let me give you another link. Try that link, KW. Hopefully that one would actually work for you. So Derek says, I felt the same about foreclosures. I got lucky and sold my second home a week ago. I am stacking cash at this point to buy foreclosures. I think cash is a good thing to grab right now, especially since the system seems to be pulling cash out of the system. Oh, here we go. Someone's coming in. Hey, is this KW? Yeah, KW. Chris Williamson. There we go. How you doing? Can you hear me, Chris? I can hear you. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Now right. I've, I've got you on my headphones, so hopefully it doesn't echo through. So all you guys in the chat, uh, let me know if you can actually hear Chris as well. I want to make sure that this experience is good for you too. So Chris, what kind of deck do you want to play against? Uh, it's up to you, man. I got something fun without power, or I got something fully powered, just ready to rumble. So you tell me. Why don't we start the uh, with the unpowered one, because I'm kind of itching to play my red deck. All right. Let me go grab it real quick. Okay. If you don't mind, there are two Ice Age cards in here. Oh, that's fine. Okay, all right. Other than that, I think it's good. Yeah. I'm desperate to play right now, so let's go for it. <laughs> okay, let's see. I will switch to the down camera. Okay, I got a pile shuffle. So if anyone else is still in the stream and wants to get some games in after uh, Chris and I jam a couple, just uh, let me know. Thanks for joining the stream, by the way, Chris. Yeah, no problem, man. I watched you. Like I said, I mentioned your other stream. You know, I started doing my own little YouTube channel with my son oh, after you watching you and Timmy Talks. Well, what's your uh, YouTube channel? Uh, it's just KW. Oh, cool. Well, I'll yeah, have it's to, got some, I'll have it's to... got some Tekken videos on there, but it's got about ten Magic videos on there. There's a Stasis Vault video on there you might enjoy. Awesome, KW. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, Timmy talks. He's a great channel too. I jumped onto his stuff right when he was first starting, and definitely was trying to kind of signal boost him, lift him up, and get people to notice him because he was making great stuff and trying really hard. Okay, let's 
see. I like that uh, Dan Fraser playmat you got there. Yeah, I saw it online the other day, and I was like, man, Jester's Cat was actually the first single I ever bought. Oh, my gosh. We, it was we $25. Must have, we must have started about the same time. That was the first big, expensive Magic card that, that I saw that my cousins were waving around in my face. So, like, my, my introduction to Magic was like, here's this game called Magic, and here's a Jester's Cat. <laughs> yeah, like... um. I started right. I started like right after revise, so I had access to a little bit of revise, and then a uh, fourth edition Ice Age. I'm gonna grab my dice. I'll be right back. Sure. Okay, let me get gems out here. Get some for me and some for Chris. For anybody who's curious, all these gems I'm pulling out of here, these are actually the ones that came in those sets back in like 1996 uh, around there. Those revised boxes, they had the little black bag with the with the gems in them. That's what these are. Okay, should I uh, roll for us to see who goes first? Uh, you can roll, I'll take evens. Oh, okay, we can do that. Oh, sure, okay, so evens. Oh, it came off. Oh. And it's odds. All so right. I will play. Oh man, I got a mulligan. All right, I'll keep this. No mana at all. That won't go very well. Oops. Okay, there we got mana, and I'll put this on bottom. Okay, you ready? Yep, go ahead. Okay, let's say mountain into a black vice. All right. And I'll pass turn. Okay, I'll take three. What are these? Okay, I can't see your... There it is. I've got them on the screen now. Planes. And now we'll pass turn. I'll play a Mishra's into an Ankh of Mishra. So every land put into play uh, makes yeah. you take two damage. And I'll pass turn. Okay, I'll take three again. Forest, I'll take two. Let me go ahead and disenchant your black vice. Okay, vice is out. Go ahead. Um, tap. Let's see. I will play another Mishra's and I'll take two. And then I will activate the factory and I'll swing for two and pump one. Yep. Then I'll pass the turn. Play a forest and I'll take two. And then I will pass turn. Untap. Play a mountain. Take two. And I'll activate both factories. And I'll swing for four. Okay, I'll plow one. Okay, one's out. I'll and I'll two. take two. And then I'll pass turn. Play a forest. So you go to three. Okay. 
And then I will play Tome. Okay. Go ahead. So you tapped out. Play a land, take a damage. And I'll do a ball lightning. Yeah, you got it. And attack. And Black Vice for turn one was kind of brutal. Yeah, that was kind of brutal. Got kind of lucky and pulled that guy out. Well, you're on the play now, though, so I'll give you a chance All to right. empty your hand out a bit more. I tried to build this one kind of similar to the strategy on some of those ATOG decks, but without all the expensive cards. Yeah, I was thinking, is that an ATOG deck? Or? Yeah, there's there's no moxes, there's no power. This is you know pretty much a budget deck. I mean, I've got um, I've got some proxies in it, but if it's just they're just for cards in other decks. But there's nothing big and super expensive in it, and it's just mono red, but it's effective. Yeah, no, it's uh, pretty quick. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, wow. I can't keep this. I got a mulligan. I'm going to keep. Okay. Oops. Okay, let's try this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, this is a keeper, and I will put this back. Okay, go for it. All right, let me plug my laptop in really quick, if you don't mind. Sure, yeah, go for it. All right, good to go. I will start out with a factory and go ahead. Okay. Uh, mountain and I'll pass. Okay. Draw. For the factory. Oh my gosh. Swing for two? I'll bolt it. Yep. Go ahead. I will play a mountain and an onk, and I'll pass. Okay. Planes. I'll take two. It's two, right? Yeah. Can I swing for two? Take it. And I'll pass her. I'll play another onk. Okay. And I'll pass turn. Take two. Take it. Pass turn. I'll play a factory. Take four. And I'll pass turn. <clears throat> Maze. Mm. Maze is and good. I'll take four, right? Yeah. Good. I will pass the turn. A divine offering. One of your uh, box there. Okay. 
it goes away and you gain two. Not past her. Draw. Play a land. I'll go to ten. And I'll pass the turn. Take two. Regrow? Um, I will fork that. I'll get a regrowth too. Okay. So I'm gonna take my offering. I'll get a lightning bolt back. Okay. <laughs> and then I will pass turn. Untap. Draw. Hmm. I'll play a land and go to eight. And then I will chain lightning you for two. For, for three, three, I mean. And then I'll pass the turn. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Okay. I just said hey to my friend Andy in the chat. I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and divine offer. I was going to wait till the end of your turn, but I got eight cards, so divine offer into your aunt. Um, results. And then I will play a forest. Okay. Ch -ch 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 -ch. And I will pass turn. Untap. Draw. Play another onk, and I'll pass. Look at all these onks. Four for IC. That's the Ice Age card too. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, okay, I got a couple um, unlimiteds, but I just got them in other decks. I see results. All right, um, and then I'll pass turn. Untap. Draw. I will play. Hmm. I'm going to fireball you for four. For four? Yeah. Then I'll pass the turn. Try to get all these things on camera so everybody can see it. Ooh, disrupting scepter. Scepter. And then I will pass her. Untap. Okay, so you have a maze and a factory. Let's see. I'll play a mountain. 
take me to six. Then I'll bolt you. Okay. Take you to four. I'm at six now. Six. What I gained two from the divine offering of your. Oh, last... you did. Yeah. Oh, I missed that. Uh, can I back up that bolt? Sure. Sorry, I missed that divine offering. Okay, so you're still there. Um. Does yeah, that does change it. Let's see. I also would have played a different land. Okay, that was my mistake though. Okay, yeah, go for it. Let's just go ahead and do it. Let's do it. Titanium song. Oh, wow. Look at that. Let's run it. I'll swing for seven. Interesting. Very interesting. I'm thinking. Okay, so that means my, I'm going to have my Onk block your IC manipulator. Okay. So your Onk will die. Um, yeah, the uncle die. I'm trying to decide if I want a factory. I'll let the other guy go through for three. So I'll go to three. Okay. And then I will pass turn. So yeah, Ankh is dead. Okay. So uh -huh. at the end of your turn, I will lightning bolt you. Yep. Which takes you to four. Six. You're at six? What? You never added the two from the Divine Oh, office. did I never put those back? I thought I did. <laughs> okay. Okay. So with the, with the three coming off, you're at six? I'm at six now, yeah. I had, I had uh, nine. Interesting. Okay. Untap. How do I keep missing that? Hmm. thinking so I'll play another factory I'll get three and I'll stone rain your maze oh, I can't do that no, I can. I can. I'll play an Ankh of Mishra. Okay. And then I'll pass the turn. And you're at three, right? Uh, yes, I'm at three. <clears throat> I'll activate the factory and I will swing for four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Nine. So he will activate this factory and he will block this factory will block your factory and pump himself. I'm going to plow him. Oh, okay. So you plow in response, I assume, to my tap effect well, to pump himself. To which, the activation, but Oh, to the activation. Okay. I didn't give you time to react. Okay, so that so if you if you plowed him in response to the activation 
then I will pump in response to your plow to, to make fine. it bigger. That's so fine. he so he goes out of there, and I gain three. But I now no now no longer have a blocker. So that means my onk is going to have to block your four four, which means I'm going to take two. I'm going to take five more, which leaves me at one. Yep. Okay. Go ahead, I guess. So you are at six. Right? Yep. Ball lightning? <laughs> I just stopped. Oh. Tap a green for a plow. <laughs> That's an awesome forest there, man. Dude, yeah. I, I just got crazy lucky there. I top decked that. <laughs> yeah, with one one life off there. Okay. So should we switch over to the expensive decks? Yeah, let's do one with that. Okay, what what expensive deck do you want to play against? Uh, you can choose as long as it's not the deck. Okay, do you dislike control decks or do you like playing against aggro decks? Whatever you want to play, I just don't want to play the deck. Okay, um, I haven't played Stasis in a long time. Sure, run Stasis. Cool. Right, I got to take uh, two cards out of here real quick. Yeah, that's fine. Let's see, is this one? I got to pile shuffle this too. And hey, for everybody watching, if uh, somebody else wants to play next, uh, just let me know there in the chat. <laughs> Sounds like you got a happy kid there. Yeah, she's eating some food, so she's pretty happy. That's awesome, man. How old is she? Uh, four. She's my youngest, and I have a 18-year-old and a 7-year-old. I'm sorry, 18-year-old and a 14-year-old. Wow, that's quite the spread. You get to see all the different problems, the young problem and the new and the older problems. Yeah, I'm starting all over with divers and everything else again, but uh, it's all good. You know, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. If I would have had that extra white, I could have dusted dusted both of your factories. That would have been. Dusted, dusted, dusted. That would have been awesome. That would have worked because you wouldn't have gained any life from it. And the. Uh... But that's only if I if I'm attacking you because dust to dust is a sorcery though, right? Yeah. So upon your activation, I can still play the sorcery there, right? Uh, no, no. The only an instant upon activation. Oh. Well, I guess I could have used it on your onk before before a Definitely. Time, right? Yeah, and that would have saved you a lot of damage. There does have to be two targets on the table though for a dust to dust. So if there's only one target on the table, you can't, can't it, it cannot be played. But if there's at least two targets, you can. I've had times where uh, I've activated my own factory just because I needed to get another target and blow something my opponent had off the table. Oh, uh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. This deck has my proxies in it, also. My all my real cards are in the the Powerball deck. I played it. Yeah, I, this has got um, proxies in it as well. All my um. All my real cards are in a binder. Okay. Hey, Paul uh, Mueller said he could play the next match. That's awesome. All right, Paul. Let me reply to him here. You want evens or odds? Uh, I'll take evens. You got it. Okay, let's see what I drew. Um, keep. I got a keeper. I will keep as well. Okay, let's do this, Chris. I will play Underground, Sapphire, into Felwar, and yep. pass. Nice. Yeah, that's definitely a good start. Draw. Library. Oh, that's good. 
Draw again. Such a good start. Pearl into a soul ring. Okay. And I will pass turn. Go ahead. So my fell word does not tap for mana right now. Because I have to have a color I can get out of it. Um, I'll tap those two for a winter orb. Yep. And I'll pass the turn. <clears throat> Draw again. Savannah. Elf. Okay. Um, resolves. Okay. And I will uh, pass a turn. How many cards in hand? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. <clears throat> you can only untap one land, right? Oh, yeah. Sorry, you're right. Um, I'll tap the Sapphire for a Soul Ring. Well, I only did untap one land, I thought. I, yeah, I did, I'm the, sorry. Yeah. You're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. So Sapphire for a Soul Ring. Um, and I will pass the turn. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot to ask. What format are we playing? Oh, um, I think this one is legal for Atlantic, and it's legal for EC, I think, if I remember okay. right. Okay. Is there a mana burn or not is what I'm asking. Whatever you want to do. You want to do mana burn? I don't really want to do mana burn. We can if you want to. I'm, I'm fine with either way. If you don't want it, okay, we won't play it this game. Let's not do mana burn. Sure. I'm going to disenchant your orb at the end of your turn. I will. I'll power sync that for two. Okay. All right, my turn? Yeah. Two, three, four, five. And I'll untap my Savannah. Okay. Tundra. Burnham? Burnham resolves. Savannah Lions? Resolves. And press turn, go ahead. Okay, one land. And those. We get one. One white, two for the soul ring, and I'll balance. Ah! Two cards in hand. I got three, so I'll lose a card. I'll discard a plow. Okay. How many lands do you have? I have two lands. You know what? Let's lose the library. Okay. It's not activated, anyways. Very nice balance. Thank you. And I got one floating. So with that floater, I'll tap two more and I'll time twister. Okay, that works. Losing a Mitra's and a uh, and a Tundra. Okay. I have not yet played a land this turn. Side note. Well, now that I'm look, I can look at my deck. Actually, let me see if it's EC or if it's uh. There's one strip. Yeah, I've only got one strip mining here. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah my, my deck's legal for EC or Atlantic right now. Okay. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's no mana left in my pool. I'll play a jet. And I'll play a Tundra. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's see. And I'm going to get... Or do I want to? Hold on. I 
I'll pass the turn with that. Okay. City of Brass. I remember, there's still the winter orb out. Yeah, I only had this van attack. Oh, okay, cool. You're right. So I'll tap the jet, the soul ring for a disenchant on your winter orb. Um, that resolves. Sweet. I have one flirty. Black Lotus. Yep. Tap for black. Okay. Three, four, five. Black. One, Take two, one for the city. Five. Mind twist for five. Ooh. Ah, that's harsh. That is harsh. Mind twist is big. I'm thinking. Oh uh, yeah, I can't do anything about that. Okay, so transmute, stasis, plow, twiddle, and stasis. Oh, you only had five in hand. I was thinking you had seven from the time twister. That was good. That was a good twist. Yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> that big. Was that was big. Mind twist is so good. And then I'll pass turn. Go ahead. How many cards in your hand? Four. Okay, I will transmute. I'll do the Felwer Stone for Howling Mine, and okay. I'll pass the turn. Sounds good. Hold on, well, I didn't take a point from the City of Brass, sorry. I got you on my side. So I'll draw one, two. You have zero cards in hand, right? Zero cards, thanks to Mind Twist. I will play the Noir Elves, Birds of Paradise, Time Walk. Results. Next turn. Draw one, two. Factory. Green. One, two, three. Sorry. Ernie's out. Earn him? Yep. And then I'll swing for one. I'll take it. All right, pass turn. Untap, draw one, two. I will ancestral myself. Yep. One, two, three. Let's see, I will tap. A soul or a soul ring for another howling mine, and I'll get two mana to play stasis. Okay, and I'll pass turn. You're all and draw two more. Don't forget. Oh, that's right. Oh, you're right. So that's one, two, three. Sweet. I will play. Tundra? Okay. Oh, did you untap your lands? I did not. Oh, okay. I'll get to untap the pearl then. Okay. All I got is tapped as a uh, these two. Okay. And the the pearl untapped though? Oh, you're right. <laughs> Stasis. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking Winter Orb. And it was right. the, was um, the soul was... ring tapped too? Was, was it tapped? Was the, the soul ring on next to your Lana War Elf? Green and one, two, three. No, because I used the. Uh, let me see. Let me make sure. No, I used the tropical island and the factory and the pearl and the birds to play the Urnum. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so the soul ring was untapped. Okay, cool. 
Let me put it down here so you can see it. Uh, I guess I'll swing for four. I'll take it. I go to and I'll 15. Pass go ahead. Okay, so I'll upkeep stasis. And I'll draw one, two, three. Pay a blue here. And a pearl. Yep. And I'll pass turn. One, two, three. Emerald. And I'll play a factory. And I'll pass turn. Go ahead. I'm just trying to rearrange this stuff. Sure. Here. Upkeep stasis. Draw one, two, three. Hmm. I'll play a ruby. I'll tap these two. For Demonic Tutor. Okay. Maybe that. Hmm. Kind of a tough choice. Yeah, I think I'll go for that one. Okay, so that's in hand. I'll play a factory into a time vault. Yep. And I'll pass the turn. <clears throat> One, two, and three. We got another Savannah. I'm going to play Blue and two others. Time Twister. Time Twister. Um, interesting. Sorry. That, that's fine. That's fine. Um, I'm going to twiddle my time bolt in, re in response. Okay. And then twist resolves. White. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Armageddon. Armageddon. Okay, let's see. That resolves. Okay. 
And then, oh wait, I have a tundra over here. Sapphire. Okay. And pass turn. Okay. So I'm not going to pay my upkeep on stasis. So stasis, yep. well actually, sorry. No, this is fine. Okay. So stasis goes away. So I don't untap. Draw. I will play strip mine. Did you draw three? Oh, three. That's right. I did forget. Um... Let's see. So I'm going to tap the time bolt to take another turn. Yep. And I'm going to go to that next turn. And I'll discard. How many cards do you have in your hand? Oh, I, I have a bunch. I have to discard a winter orb. And it's a tough choice. And a Felwer Stone. Yep. So I'll take that turn. And tap. Draw one, two, three. I'll play a Tundra, a Lotus, I'll sack the Lotus, tap the strip, no that's not the strip, let's tap the Ruby, to play Kismet. Yep. And then I'll get Soul Ring and the sapphire for stasis mm -hmm. and the jet with that other soul ring mana and i'll play another howling mine okay and i'll pass the turn Tropical. And I'll move to discard. I'm going to discard a maze of it. Okay. I'm going to skip my turn to, tap, to untap my time vault and give it back to you. Yep. Someone just said hi to me here in the chat. It's uh, Rare Velos. Okay, so I'm just going in and earn them. Sorry, earn them. Okay. Uh, library, balance, and the swords. Okay. That should give me seven. Hold on one second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. Good to go. Okay, I will pay my upkeep on stasis and I'll draw one, two, three, four. And I'll play a tabernacle. Nice. And I will pass the turn discarding winter orb. Okay, so tabernacle is what? Two or one for each? You have to pay one mana for each creature to keep it in play. That's fine. I don't really need them. That's cool. Very nice. So I'm drawing four, right? Yeah. Two, three, four. Savannah.
Or I'm discarding a factory and elves and a uh, earn them. Okay. And then I'll pass around. Go ahead. Okay. Stasis goes away. I don't have a mana for the upkeep. I draw one, two, three, four. I'll play a planes. And I will tap my time vault to take another turn. Yep. And I'll tap the pearl and the strip mine to play another howling mine. Mm -hmm. And I'll tap the tundra to ancestral myself. Yep. One, two, three. Okay, so now I need to go to my end step and discard a bunch. So I will discard transmute, two plows, and an underground sea. Seven cards in hand, and I'll take that time bolt turn. Yep. Now I draw one. Two, three, four, five. Okay, I'll play City of Brass. And a Black Vice. And a Chaos Orb. And let's get a black and one of any color and all demonic tutor. Yep. For that card. Library's getting thin here. And the card I tutored for is... Da, 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 da. Of course, stasis. Yep. And I will pass the turn, and I have to discard um, planes. Go ahead. All right, I take three from the uh, vice. I'm drawing five. One, two, three, four, five. Play a Pendle Haven. Actually, no, let me take that back. I'm sorry. Sure. Yeah, go for it. That's fine. Play a city. Okay. I'm going to discard two Seven Alliance of Swords and a Pendle Haven. Okay. Then I'll pass turn. I'll pass it back to you. Untap my time vault. All right. So don't forget the Black Vice damage. Oh, you're right. So three more. Sorry. No problem. Definitely keep the Actually, I'm going to keep all these. So, Paul Mueller, are you still ready to play a game next? Did I play a land this turn? Uh, I don't know. Go for it if you 
If you don't think you have, it's fine. All right, go ahead. Okay, I will pay the upkeep for stasis. And I'll draw one, two, three, four, five. I'll play a land. And I'll pass the turn discarding Mishra's. No, not that. Transmute, Tabernacle, and Distant Yet. Okay. All right. So I'll take three. I'm a 10. Play planes. All right, I think I'm good now. Oh, okay, I discard a plow, a city, a demonic theater, and an orb. Sure thing. And go ahead. Okay, this time I'm not going to pay the upkeep for stasis. So it goes away, and I draw one, two, three, four, five. I have exactly five left in my library. And I will play a Tundra. And I'll tap two for a Felwar Stone. Yep. And I'll tap these three, take one, cast Time Twister. Damn. Shit. Okay. Then after the twist resolves, I'll tap to take another turn after this with my Time Vault. Yeah, man. This is what I was holding on to. I was holding on to four disenchants. I'm just waiting to get one more white man. Oh, man. <laughs> and a Time Walk and two Sarahs. That's definitely a pretty stacked hand, that's for sure. It, it it comes down to this right now. Like, am I going to draw, draw another stasis. stasis? That's what I really need. If I don't draw into a stasis with the twist or the time walk turn, then I'm in trouble. So that gives you what? Five. And yeah. Plus seven. So yeah, so the one. odds are pretty good. Yeah, you got 12 cards maybe, you're drawing, maybe, right? Maybe I should shuffle a bit more. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a lot of cards I'm going to draw. And if I get a twiddle, then I can just tw twiddle the time vault and draw another five. So I've got pretty good odds. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've already played a land this turn. Okay. So I'm going to end this turn, start the next one. Yep. Bunch of stuff untaps. I draw one, two, three, four, five. I play an underground C. So interestingly enough, I did not actually draw a stasis, but I did draw a demonic tutor. Nah. I think you got it, man. Yeah, because I can go well, several turns I'm now. Like a recall. Then go get the stasis and cast it. You got it, Edwin. Okay. <laughs> that's what I pulled up with the rest of my hand. Okay. Boy, those stasis games, they're they're kind of long. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got a I got a nice Twiddle Vault deck myself, so I'm very familiar with it. Oh, Twiddle Vault is fun. Do you play lots of recalls? Well, actually, I got, it's, it's actually Stasis Twiddle. It's, it's very similar to yours. I play four recalls, uh, three vaults, and then four black vices. I also got two copy artifacts in there. Um, I'm thinking about putting some transmutes, but I haven't decided yet. Uh-huh. But yeah, so the black vice. I also got um, I got uh, four surrenders in there as well. Nice. 
So if you can get the Tom Ball Twiddle working, you can start killing them with Surrender, you know? So you can go aggressive or you can lock them down. You can go, actually, yep. you got three ways. You can combo out with Twiddle Vault or you can lock them down with Stasis or you can go aggressive with Serendibs. Yeah, there's Kismet. I mean, I got I got two Kismets in there too. So, but I'm not running black. I'm just running blue and white. So. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, actually, I'd love to see a deck list of that if you if you're willing to email me a deck list. I'd, I'd it's love on, to it's see. Um, so if you go to my YouTube channel, um, KW, two, you said. Yeah, KW. There's two. Um, there's two Twiddle Vault games. The uh -huh. second one shows a, a deck list in the beginning of it. Okay. Yeah, so you'll see it there. Cool. I'll check that out. All right, man. So oh, hey, pleasure playing with you. I'm going to be some dinner. Thank you so much for playing, Chris. I appreciated the time. It was great. And thanks for coming into the stream, too. Yeah, take it easy, brother. Okay, bye. Okay, Paul Mueller, are you ready to join the game and play? Uh, if you are, then let me post in the uh, link here. Let's see, I'll grab that. Okay, let me check up on the stuff here. I missed a bunch of chats that you guys sent. Oh, there he is, Paul. Can you hear me? Paul? I can see you, but I can't hear you. I don't know if you can hear me. But I cannot hear you. Okay, Zyno the Retro Gamer says, having some problems with donations, do I need to set up something before I can donate? Um, so Zyno, if you're trying to donate, you might have to have a Google account um, backed up like either by PayPal or a credit card to be able to, to do super chats. I think that's what that is probably linked to. And for anyone who doesn't know, like any money donated to me in a, in a super chat, I don't keep the money. I send it straight on to Make-A-Wish Foundation. And not only do I send it straight to them, but I match it with my own money. So go ahead and make any donation you want. It goes straight to Make-A-Wish Foundation. Uh, okay, so let's see. Oh, the Raven, uh, so Andy was talking about the, the Bolt life. With old school, do they not allow reprint of a card that is legal? So, Sai, Sai Chosen 71, they do allow reprints, but it has to have the original artwork on it and the original card frame. It can't be the different card frame. Um, Paul, no, I cannot hear you. I just saw your message. I suppose I could chat with you over here in this window. You're not coming through yet. We'll just give Paul a second to uh, get his, uh, his settings all set up. Looks good though. Okay, so let's see here. So Gwolfwood says, hi Edwin, I just logged in. Was wondering if you're planning on playing or has played a budget deck on the stream. Uh, yeah, I just played a, a budget red deck actually. And I will totally do, I have another budget deck also. I could do the budget red and I have budget black white and I'd be happy to play with you right after we, Paul and I play with those budget decks. Okay, Austin Russum says, I'm also running a very similar blue, white, black Twiddle Vault deck minus the Transmute. Yeah, the Transmute, man, that's an awesome card. That oftentimes, I'm almost always either getting one or two cards, either the Time Vault or Chaos Orb is one of those two I'm gonna actually get. So Dennis says, it's amazing to see some morning games here from Denmark. So good morning in Denmark. <laughs> Mad Cow says those are some great games. Yeah, those were some good games so far. I got really lucky in our second game when I was playing my red mono deck and I top decked that ball lightning. That was pure luck. <laughs> he totally had me on that one. And I made stupid mistakes too. I wasn't counting his life right because I missed a uh, divine offering on something he actually did. Does this shirt come with a Rudy smell? Oh, Yes. <laughs> ah, smells like tacos. Okay, Paul, I just saw you do a thumbs up. You plugged in your mic too. I can't hear you yet. 
I can see you. Your camera angle looks great. But I can't hear you yet. Make sure also in Werby, you, you don't have it set to mute in, in Werby also. So earlier in the stream, I was talking about that, that beta starter deck. Let me grab that so I can show you guys. Okay, so this is, I'll put this back in so I can hear in case he talks to me. This is actually um, a beta starter deck that I opened up with like Rudy and Open Boosters and Tavis and all them, like in uh, the first time we ever visited Rudy's shop. And um, that video actually is like, it's a pretty big video, but I got, o OB actually gave me this box and I got him to sign it there too. It's backwards, I know, so it doesn't really read right. That's a really favorite possession I've got. Here's the funniest part. If you can see the price of it, $7.95. <laughs> now these things are worth crazy money. Okay, so Paul, anything else you should try? Okay, so um, also your microphone could be used by a different program. If you have anything else plugged in that could be using the mic, um, close your other programs. And you also, um, if you just plugged in that microphone, you might actually want to close the Werebee window and then close your browser and then open your browser back up and then go to the Werebee window again. I think he probably just tried that because he just disappeared. <laughs> okay, Edwin, what's your favorite non-Power9 card? Um, hey, Paul? Is it better now? Yeah, there we go. Okay. I can hear you. All right. right. <laughs> so someone just asked me my favorite non-Power 9 card. I wish you didn't say non-Power 9, because my favorite card in the entire game is Time Twister. Absolutely. I love Time Twister. Um, mm -hmm. My second favorite card that's not a Power 9, though. Gosh, I'm going to seem like such a sellout, because I love Library of Alexandria, because I really yeah, like drawing <laughs> cards. It, that's That's got to be, like, right there. Because it's just so fun to draw cards. Even if I play library in a game and I get my ass kicked, but I get to draw cards off the library, I still have a great time. <laughs> okay, Paul, I'll switch to my down angle here. All right. So I do have some um, proxies in here. Oh, that's fine. What deck uh, do you want to go against? You can just choose at random, like whatever you want, didn't play yet, I guess. <laughs> You know but, um, what? I want to actually use my real cards, so I'm going to use my Powerball okay. deck. Oh, wow. Okay. This one is built for Atlantic right now. This one is uh, for EC, but I mean, <laughs> I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference. <laughs> um, okay. That's fine. I do have um, one playset in here where it's just the back of the magic card. So okay. Do I just say it as I cast or something? Or yeah, it's that's all fine. the same card. Okay. That's totally fine. As long as it's easy. Yeah. It's nothing hard. If you want, um, since we live so close to each other, I could print you up a sheet of uh, paper proxies to slide into the sleeves for cards you want. I probably would need that over time. It's just some of these cards are like they're in the mail or I'm just um, not organized yet. <laughs> so, uh -huh. you know, I'm dying I'm to hang out with you. It's been killing me that you live so close now. And we haven't been able to hang up the stupid virus. Me too, man. <laughs> yeah. I've got to get you over here to show you this arcade. <laughs> this this a Legends Ultimate one. Dude, this thing is badass. Yeah. I've been wanting to see it, so... It's going to be cool. Uh, since you got your dice there and you seem to be all ready, do you want to just roll for us? Sure. Um, what do you want? Um, I guess uh, odd. How about I'll take I'll take odds. All right, six. So, cool. It's all you. Um, yeah, I'll choose to go first. I guess. Love your play mat, by the way. <laughs> yeah. This is one of my. I probably. I mean, behind library, it's probably my second favorite land. So. This is my go-to. So I'll wait till you're done shuffling. Cool. That's probably fine. I have your playmat too. Oh, nice. This one I have two of them, so this is my. 
I use it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if I got enough mana to go. And I did. Okay. I'll, I'll keep this too. Okay. Go for it. All right. I'm just going to do forest. Scripts. There we go. Yep. Scripts cards. Yeah. Okay. And, and pass turn. I will do that and pass. Okay. Drop. Tropical. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Good. Unstable mutation. Oh, very nice. Yeah, resolves. <laughs> Looks like I take right. four. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll swing for four. So. Yeah, I already took it. All right, and then I'll. Okay, I'll pass him there. Tundra, and I'll pass turn. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Just gonna go down to three. Go. Hmm. I'm gonna put another another unstable on it. Um, in response to that being cast, I'm gonna plow it. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So I'll get three. Yep. In fact, you get my three. <laughs> the life I just lost. <laughs> and I'm gonna pass from there. Ah oh, man, this feels like such a dick move. I can't do this. But, uh, <laughs> no, do it. It's all okay, right. <laughs> fine. I'll strip mine your your tropical. Okay. Then, I'll, then I'll pass. All right. Draw for turn. Oh hey, I can shut the chat now. Give us more play room. Yeah. There we go. Oh. Sorry everybody. I was forgetting about that. The Mox Emerald. <laughs> I nice. I love it, bro. It's it's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna cast a uh, Agathian Pixies. Um. Why don't we drain that? All right. And pass from there. So untap. So you got two. Yep. So two comes in, and I'll play a James Day mm -hmm. Tome. And then pass. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to pass from there. <laughs> okay. I have four cards. Okay. And I'll pass. probably crazy but i'm gonna cast a regrowth so it's it's in the mail so that's, um, a regrowth. that's fine uh re yeah. it resolves okay i'm gonna get um my tropical back okay and just play it and pass okay i'm gonna end of turn tap to draw yeah. draw i'll play a ruby yep. and a maze of it mm -hmm. and i'll pass I like playing with my real cards so much more than the proxies. <clears throat> and just so anyone's curious, I'm not playing the deck. This is very deck-like, but it's not the deck. I'm just going to pass from there. Okay, I'll draw, and then main phase draw. Yep. Play another Volcanic and a Sapphire. I'll tap those two for a chaos orb, and I'll pass. Mm, okay. Um, in your end step. Yeah. Psionic blast. I'll take it. Take it. Yeah. Sure. And you yep. take two. I take two. All right. 
Put it on my turn? Yep. Yep. Okay. Straight mode. Yep. I'm going to cast... Um, Yeah, I'm going to pass from there. Okay. I'll tap these four to draw. Then I'll yeah. tap draw. Okay. Play City of Brass. And I'll tap these three for a Basalt Monolith. And oh, okay. I'll pass. <laughs> oh, in your end, of, uh, end step, I'll side blast you again. I'll take it. And then you take two. So you're at eight, right? Yep. And um, I'm going to strip that maze of it. Okay. Resolves? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to drop. I'm going to go ahead and uh, cast Time Twister. Cards in hand? Three. Hmm. I'm going to counterspell that. I pass from there. Okay, I'll tap these to draw. Mm -hmm. Then untap. Not that. <laughs> draw. Jet. And city. Yeah. Tap these three and that. Draw again. And I'll pass. Okay. Can I draw? Oh, yeah. Pendulaven? Mm hmm. And I'm going to pass from there. Thinking. Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, actually, no. Hold on. One, two, three, to untap that. Then it'll untap the rest. Okay. The draw. Play a Mishra's Factory. Yeah. And then I will Demonic Tutor. For this card, you have how many in hand? I have three. Okay. Then I'll get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to bring Geyser and myself for seven. All right. That's good. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven. Play Lotus. Mm -hmm. I think I've already played a land this turn, right? I think it was the uh, Demetrius. Yeah. If anything. Okay, so I'm going to pass the turn discarding City Brass. Go ahead. Okay. Flying man. <clears throat> he resolves. He resolves. Yep. All right. Pass from there. <laughs> okay. So the basalt's still tapped. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's mean. Got to do it though. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, you gotta do it. Yeah. <laughs> Cards in hand? Three. Mine twist for three. Aw, oh, damn. Alright. 
took some good ones, man. Ancestral. Nice. Berserk and Unstable Mutation. Ooh, that would have been big. Right. Yeah. Then I'll no. attack with the Mishra's Factory. I'll attack with the Mishra's Factory for two. Um, I'll pump this with Pendlehaven. Make it a 2 3. Plow it. Okay. Get two. Okay, so you gain All right. two. And then I'll pass the turn. Pass? Yep. Okay, resolves. And pass. Let's pass from there. Um, trying to think if it's worth No, it's probably not worth it. Okay, so untap. Yeah. Draw. Play Mishra's. I'm going to get two blue to put a power artifact on the basalt. Mm. Okay. <laughs> then I'll tap two. Don't want to do that. Remember this. Three. To untap the basalt. Now that's yeah. accessed infinite mana. So I'll go ahead and yeah, draw the off the book. Okay. Then I'll play another book. Then I'll draw off okay. that book. Yeah. Hmm. Then I'll go ahead and use the Chaos Orb. Okay. Um, actually, no, I can save it. That's fine. But I will, though. Let's see. I just put out the second factory, right? Yeah. And you're, how many cards in your hand? I have nothing. Okay. Zero. So I'll use Basalt Mana to activate a factory, and I'll swing with yep. him. Yeah, and I'll swing with him. Okay. And then pump him. Pump it for three? Yeah. Three, three. I'm going to take it. Okay. And then I'll pass the turn. Okay. I'm going to pump this. May get a two three. I'll blow it up with the chaos orb. <laughs> All right, we don't flip right through the. Uh, you just target. Do you want to do gentlemen's? Pretty or, much. Or do you want me to flip? No, no. I I, I was just wondering because I haven't played through webcam, but um. All right, he's dead. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that 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 is a style. That's called for anyone who's just watching and doesn't know. That's called a gentleman's play when you're just taking the randomness okay. out and just say chaos orb just works. All right. I'm gonna pass from there. Okay, so untap. Draw one. Oh, there we go, fireball. <laughs> <laughs> All right, game two. It came up. <laughs> Looks like people in the chat are loving your foil proxies. Yeah, I made them all from scratch, so. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. So you actually took uh, acetone and wiped all the ink off the, some of the cards? Yeah. Nice. You'll have to send me a list set, of... But, um... You got to send me a list of what cards you actually want me to make for you in the, the proxy method. Dude, those are nice. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I love it. That is so, so sweet. Cool. <laughs> those are That's those are so one. sweet. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I tried to do my um my tropicals too with like a Posca paint pen. Mm -hmm. Just to make them look like, you know. This one's a little sloppy, but you know, you get the gist. Do you are want you me to sideboarding at all or? Um well actually it's it's up in the air. Do you want me to switch decks or do you want to keep playing? Oh, um, yeah, you can switch it. I, I, I didn't want to sideboard just to, you know, 
have fun. I think mine's pretty, you know. Okay, let's not see then. Change too much with the I like giving people on the stream a variety of things here. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do a budget deck. I think this okay. one's budget. Let me see. Yeah, this one's pretty much. I mean, well, I mean, there's expensive versions of the cards in here, but it can be built totally with revised and stuff on budget. It's a black white deck. Yeah. Oops. played old school in at least like a year and a half yeah and Maybe i nagged you into taking out your camera <laughs> <laughs> yeah i really wanted to play so i was like i gotta figure this out somehow so I'm trying to go fast here so people aren't bored out of their minds sitting there on the stream. <laughs> this was like the first time I ever had people not immediately want to jump into games. That was a little bit different. I didn't expect that. Next time I'm going to have to line up some people that I know for sure want to play <laughs> before I start the stream. Now that I, uh, I have some sort of setup... I can definitely jump in. Just I didn't have a setup, so I was like, you know, maybe I should not play. But <laughs> okay, I'm looking at the chat here. Someone asked if uh, Turbo Stasis. No, Steve, uh, I would just played Turbo Stasis a bit ago. Um, I just played a deck called Powerball before. Now I'm doing a black white budget aggro deck. You can go first if you want. see oh man one land that ain't gonna cut it i got a mulligan okay uh, i'll stick with this um let's see austin was asking me how often do i do these streams um i haven't done a stream for a while austin i've just been super busy with work um, hopefully I can do them a bit more often now. Sometimes they just kind of happen to ad hoc as I have time. Yay, I got enough. Okay, I'll put one on the bottom now. Um, yeah. Maybe this. Okay, I'm ready. All right, it's going to open with the tropical. And still ring. That's a good start. No, I'll pass from there. Ooh, this could be good. Okay, let's say <laughs> swamp into a ritual yeah. into Ooh. a hippie. Okay, yeah, that's gonna be good. Okay, definitely go ahead. Good. All right, steer brass. I'm gonna cast. This is a seven D free. Oh, that's that's yeah. a pretty good answer. Yeah. <laughs> so it's good. Yep, he's out from there. Okay. And I'll play in order of the Ebon Hand, and I'll pass oh, the nice. turn. Well, I suppose these aren't completely budget. So there is there is dual lands in here. <laughs> okay. Flying them? Yep. And uh, I'm just going to put out Emerald. I'm going to make some space here. Okay. So you took one from the Serendib? I'm just going to... Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to swing. swing. I'll take deep. it. Okay. And then I'm just going to pass from there. I and have three tap. cards. Play land. Um, 
I'll attack with both the Spectre and the Order. How much does the Order give me uh, again? He's a 2 1. Can't see from here. He's a 2 1, okay. but I can pump up his attack power with 2 mana, and I can give him first strike with 1 more mana. Mm -hmm. So I can make him a 3 1 first striker. Yeah. I'm just going to take, take everything. Okay, so you have how many cards in hand? Three. You have three. Okay, um, so I'm not going to pump the knight, so you just take four then, and then one card at random. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't really matter which one, because afterwards I'm going to mind twist you for the other two. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, time twister, unstable mutation, and regrowth. Okay, and I'll pass the turn. So you take one from Serendib, go to 14. So Kevlar11 says, uh, greetings from Canada, Edwin. <laughs> Thank you, Kevlar. I'm going to cast a script. Kill a frog says, kick his butt. <laughs> but you guys, Paul's my friend. I love Paul. We'll just play a friendly game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going I'm to cast a Scrib. Okay. Yeah, okay. Scrib's out. And you're uh, done? I'm going to attack. I'm going to attack with these guys. Okay, I take four. four. Yeah. I am at 13. Yep. And then pass. And tap. <laughs> Kick his butt. <laughs> no, I have a lot to learn, uh, especially when, you know, Edwin's going to train me to be better at magic player. Well, I'm sure I've got a lot to learn, too. Um, okay, I will swing with both. Okay. 2-2 two, two Flyer and the 2-1 Pumper. I'm going to let... Uh, I'm going to block... Block the, the ground... Uh, oh, the, the Spectre? Oh, uh, no, the... Yeah, Spectre. The Spectre? Okay. Then I will pump the ground creature for... Mm -hmm. Let's see, at least one more. Let me see. Let me do the math here. Um, I think it makes sense to stay aggressive. So I'll pump him twice. So I will do four there, uh, just four damage. And I'll take one yep. and do four. And then I'll pass turn. Okay, I take one from the turn deep. So you go to nine. I'm just gonna attack again for four. Take it. I go to eight. Yep. Yeah. And then pass. Untap. Play strip mine. Mm -hmm. The thing that's interesting about this is I know you play like berserks and unstables and stuff. So if I swing with everything, I know it can yeah. definitely go bad. But I'm going to knock that out of your bad. hand. So you're going to have to top deck it. Yeah. <laughs> Best I can do is limit your mana. Okay, so I'll strip mine the drop. And then I will disenchant the soul ring. Um, or is it better? You have the side blast. Yeah, the soul ring. I'll disenchant the soul ring. Then I'll swing with both yeah. for four damage. Okay. Going down to five. And I'll pass the turn. All right. I'll and I'll hope on. you don't remember the card in your hand is gone. <laughs> yes. Okay, so now here's hoping you don't top deck an unstable or a berserk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I <laughs> I did top deck a berserk. So. Oh, you did really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can do so, think about it, dude. That's we'll awesome. <laughs> All okay, right. so I that's seven, that's <laughs> dude. That's awesome. That is super awesome. What a finish. So Andy's asking me something. Oh, let me where's my mouse? Here it is. Uh, 
Okay. Boy, that was actually a really good game. Yeah, that was good. Um, I do have con uh, concordant crossroads in the sideboard. Uh -huh. I was wondering how many, how many do you think is a good amount? If you're just using it for like, you know. If you're like using it to get rid of things like the abyss and okay. stuff, um, I'd have three yeah. in the sideboard probably. Three, right? Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm currently at. I don't even actually have a sideboard for this the, for the budget deck. So let me check. Yeah, yeah, I didn't sideboard. I was just wondering in general. Let, let's go ahead and play one, at least one more, if not more. Let me see yeah. if anyone else is on the side here waiting. So Steve Kanan is asking about Crusade and Stone Throwing Devils being banned. Shouldn't Bad Mood and Tundra Wolves uh, be for balance? It's not a bad question, Steve. Uh, remember, this was Wizards of the Coast that did the banning. I don't think Wizards was looking at balance. I think they were just looking at politics, honestly. Yeah, pretty much. So how are you guys liking Florida so far? I love it here. Christina does too. So. <laughs> I can't wait for the pandemic to be over so we can like check out all the stuff. There's so much stuff to do in Orlando. Yeah. Every you know, every week we find out more. It's pretty great. Huh. Well that is interesting. Yeah, this is interesting too. You know, if this was a tournament, I think I would mulligan. I'm going to go ahead and keep it because I want to see how it plays out. You're on the same deck, right? <laughs> yep, same deck. Um, yeah. I think, I think I'm going to mulligan this one just real quick. Hey, how about we each mulligan and we do it and we each keep one? So we just pretend like it never happened. Okay. Sure. Mine wasn't super great either. That's the fun thing about just fun games. You can look at your hand and be like, this doesn't look fun. <laughs> they just toss it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was going to struggle with that last one. I could have, you know, tried to wing it or something, but too much of a risk. I'm going to draw again. Uh, this is a keeper. Are you, um, who's going first? <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess you can. All right. Oh, actually, sorry, I lost. Sorry, yeah, that's right, I lost. So, oh, yeah, ha, there's my swamp. Go ahead. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, we're keeping whole hand, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, no mulligan time. I'm going to drop a turn. And hey, Rudy, is, Rudy just joined. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. All right, just this and pass. Okay, and I'll play that. And I'm sorry, Paul. I'm gonna be a dick. Him. Uh, <laughs> I'm right. sorry. It's so rude. <laughs> How do we um? We just roll, I guess. Um, I got six cards. How about cards number two and six? All right, two. Got the pixies and six, right? Psionic Blast. All right. Okay, and I'll pass turn. Four. Yeah. Uh, library proxy and go mark pool it's a desert but oh I just dude that is wrote on the sweet library. that yeah, is so sweet i i have my real library but we got to cut it you know i don't got the tools right now i'll play a specter so and pass
Mm, okay. Gonna skip sprites. Scribs are good. I cast that. Yep. Yeah, and I'll play this Pendle Haven, sacrificing that Pendle Haven. Sacrificing. And oh, because the legendary. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's, it's legend. You know, legendary or whatever. Yeah. So. Well, that's Great a good gaming. play because <laughs> it definitely holds my specter back. That's for sure. Um. I'll play another specter then. Double up, specter, specter. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to, I guess, strip one of your scrubs. And... You know what's amazing? They just went and it dodged it. It was so fast. <laughs> okay, fine. Well, actually, you probably want the untapped one. But you know what? I want my yeah. sign. I want my signed one in play. But um. <laughs> okay, I'll pass. Okay. So I will play a factory, okay. and I will play a black knight. <laughs> Cards of hand? Three. Ah, oh, man. It's just not worth losing a specter just to get that. Damn Pendlehaven is so good. <laughs> okay, pass turn. Stop. I'm gonna stand still here. Um Oh, oh! I thought Tavis King came in too. Yeah. Oh, Tavis. No, I, th I thought it was, but it was Kevin King. I'm just gonna pass from here too. Okay. So untap. Draw. Hmm. That is an answer. I like that. I will dark ritual, okay. and play uh, demonic hordes. That will do it. That'll do it, Donkey. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. I'm going to put him and save limitation on this. Oh, he's fat. <laughs> yeah, he's fatter. Let me see. No. Hmm. I should go about this, but I probably should have pumped him first. But whatever. You're still at twenty. Yeah, you you can take that back and play it right if you want. That's fine. We're doing fun games. <laughs> no problem. So you tap the Pendle Haven, then unstable him. I'm cool All with right, it. Yeah, we'll make him five, and I'll attack. Oh, I forgot to get my ma my life out. Okay, I'm at fifteen. Turn. And I'll just, I'll, yeah, I'll pass from there. Okay, so untap, and the three is for the upkeep on the demonic hordes. Yeah. Um, now I will swing with both specters and the knight, and I'll take one off for the factory and swing with him too. So right. that's eight damage and two cards from hand. Yeah. So you want to just pick or? Um, how many cards in your hand? How about the two on the left? Four. I guess my left? Sure. Yeah? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Berserk and Serendip. Okay. Ah, good pulls. Okay. And I will destroy the Pendle Haven. Yeah. And pass the turn. It's 
looking grim. Put the same count on him. He's me. I'll bring out another scripts. I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna pass from here. <laughs> okay. So untap. Yeah, pretty much pretty much gonna die. <laughs> Pay the upkeep on the hordes. We're gonna lose. Um, so your Scribs is a 3-3? Three, three? Yeah, this one. And... Hmm. All tapped. I mean, um, I'm gonna yeah, activate the factory, the take a damage, and I'll swing with all of them, yeah. including the hordes. He attacks. Yeah. Okay, so we'll block the two hippies, at least. Okay. And then, so uh, one of the hippies dies. And then you take yeah. five. You take nine. Oh, man. Okay, so you're at three. <laughs> All right. And you lost one card from hand from this hippie. Want to pick? Uh, left. Yeah, sure. Okay, and go for it. Much, pretty much dead here. Let's see, yeah, pretty much dead. <laughs> okay. If you want to play another game or not, but... <laughs> well, let's see if anyone else is in the stream to uh, to line yeah. up. So I had I had a Serendib and a Black Knight in my hand. Mm. Let's see, I'm checking to see if anyone else is lined up. To join for a game. If not, we keep Paul. I <laughs> said, so is anyone else joined up for a game? If not, we keep Paul. Oh. Um. Do you want me to switch decks? Or keep playing this or what? Uh, sure, if you want. Huh. You know what? I want to play the Tax Wins deck. Yeah, I was going to say play that like Tax deck. There's the black deck. Okay. Let's see what <laughs> what I just said to Rudy in the chat. He still watching? <laughs> he just said he was leaving, and then I said, "Remind me not to buy a revised dual land from you. They are shitty." <laughs> <laughs> That was pretty cool of him to stop by. Yeah. Uh, do you want to roll dice for us to see who goes first? It's kind of like a new match. We'll do odd or even. Sure. Again. I guess I'll do even. So, uh, okay. Oh, it rolled off the board. That's fine. It's an eight, so. Okay, so I guess first. I'll play. Okay. 
Dude, I'm so glad you were able to join the stream. Me too. It feels good to play some magic. Do you have any legacy decks or? Um, I don't at the moment. I have a vintage deck, but no legacy decks at the moment. If you're, uh, if I do another stream, I can make yeah, sure to like... put together a legacy deck if you want. No, I was just wondering. But um, yeah, I mean, I'd play if you had that stream, but I feel like more people would play the old school. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Okay, so I was going first, right? Yeah, I definitely need to model again this one, so. I can keep this. Go ahead and just draw seven. We're playing for fun here. Okay. Oh, I should have shown this to Rudy. The, the, I had this right here, uh, right off the side. Last time he came to my house, like they, they actually, he gave me this, and I keep it right here on the desk. It's like a has like a different kind of scent inside, and you light the top, and then uh, it just it doesn't actually have flame coming out the whole time, but the the liquid inside just kind of makes your room smell real nice. Has like a little like slow kind of smolder thing yeah. it does. I should I was gonna show him. I've got it like right there. You got a keeper? Uh, no. Just draw seven again. That's what about, fine. What about this time? Mulligan at least. No, we're playing for fun, dude. Just, just get seven. <laughs> I want to play magic, not random. <laughs> Yeah, it does kind of look like a mana potion a little bit. It almost it kind of looks like a malt of yeah, cocktail. <laughs> you know, actually, in terms of mana potion, here, let me show you guys this. I'll switch to the other camera. I don't know if you guys can see it, but right here in the background, that's actually a little mana potion that actually, like, when you move it, it starts changing colors and stuff like that. It's really cool. It's got this little symbol on it and stuff like that. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Planes into okay. land tax. And I'll pass. Nice. Love that card. Me right. too. Just play library and pass. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Untap. No land tax, of course. Draw. Play a pearl. Mm -hmm. And a chaos orb. And I'll pass. I'll draw on your end step? Yep. Good? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm actually going to bring up Pixies down instead of discarding. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to land tax. Yeah. Planes. There we go. Then draw. Yep. Okay. I'll play mountain. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go ahead and chaos orb the uh, library. Then pass turn. Seven cards in hand. Yeah. Let's see what we got here. No haven. Scripts. Yep. I'm gonna attack for two. No block. Okay, and then I'm gonna pass. 
fast in there. You're not going to Pendlehaven? Oh, wait, you can't. He's Because he's a 2-1. Huh? No, he's not 1-1. One, one. He's like a 2-1. That, that's right. Yeah. He's a 2-1. Okay. Um, so, I will, I will bolt him. <laughs> oh, okay. Nice. Okay. Um, I'm going to pass from there. Okay, untap. No land tax. <clears throat> hmm. Go ahead and play Island. Okay. And a Serendeed. I'll pass turn. gonna pass from there on tap take a damage yep serendip attacks I'll, I'll sacrifice this guy okay <laughs> no response and i'll pass <clears throat> uh, at the end of your turn i'm ancestral Ooh, very good um let's see yeah results Sapphire. Yeah, results. Yep. And I'm going to pass from there. Untap. I'm mm -hmm. going to land tax. Get mountain. Those three. Cards in hand? Five. Okay, then I'll draw for turn. Hmm. that for another land tax okay and now i'm going to cast winds of change and i've got one two three four um, five six seven eight cards in hand um in response i'm gonna take two damage i'm gonna side blast the serendip Okay, so you take two. Serendip goes out in a ball of flames. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now how many cards are left right. in your hand? Me, I got four, so I'm going to draw four. Okay, I have eight. I'll draw eight. Three back. Yeah. Oops. That land tax winds have changed, man. So much gas. Yeah. I played that at the... Um... The New York Old School Group, like Sisters of the Flame event. Uh huh. Like a, a while back. It was after that the vintage tournament on um, NYSE or NYSE Open. Uh huh. In case anybody knows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, that's what I was playing that day. It was the unpowered version, though. <laughs> okay, so. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Okay. It's a lot. Oops. Two. To play a Felwer Stone. Yeah. Thinking. when there's crumbs in my, my sleeves. I'm like, where did these come from? I'll get a red. 
and I will chain lightning the scrib sprites. I'm gonna respond with an avoid fate. Uh, what does avoid fate do again? Count. Oh. Uh, counter target like interrupt or enchantment that targets a permanent you control. Oh, this is a sorcery. Oh, only oh shoot. Okay, yeah, he's dead. So I lose this too. <laughs> No, you can take that card back. That's fine. Don't lose that in your hand. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm done. Go for it. Damn. Okay. Hmm. I'm just going to bring out Silver Library. Okay. And I'm going to pass from there. Okay, so untap. I'm going to activate land tax. It's both of them, actually. Yeah. I'm going to activate both of yep. them. So I'll get one, two, three, four, five. Is that all I got? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all I can get. Five lands come out. And then draw one. So I'll play a ruby. Okay. And I will play a serendib. Hmm. All right. And I'm going to go to, let's see, you have four mana. I guess I don't care about yeah. the taxes We're much now. Cards. So I'm going to play a plateau. Yeah. And then I'll go to my discard phase and I'll pitch a city of brass. Mm -hmm. And a city of brass. Go for it. Okay. So I'm going to draw and then look at two more. Let me keep this one. Oh, didn't. You didn't see nothing. <laughs> I, I didn't. Honestly, I was looking at the chat over here on the side. <laughs> All right. People are commenting again on your proxies. They really like your proxies. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Let's see. So Daniel Salas says, really great idea organizing this. I hope it gets traction. Greetings from Costa Rica. I'm gonna cast my Serendib. Um, and... Okay. Yep. And that's it. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass from there. Okay. I'll untap. I'll take a damage from my Serendib. Yep. Draw. Yep. I'll play a Sapphire. Okay. Um, and I'll pass turn. In your end step, I'm gonna take two. Okay. And I'm gonna side blast your Serendip. Okay, then I am going to get two red. Okay. And I'm gonna fork it and side blast your Serendip. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I take two. That, but... Then you okay. take two. Yep. And we both lose a Serendip. <laughs> okay. So you're at, what, what life you're at? You're at I'm at 16. No? Did, I, did I count this wrong? Yeah, okay. For the fork, right? Mm. I have you at 12 and me at 16. Yeah. I'm just going to pass too. Okay. Untap, yeah. draw, and Serendip. All right. Then pass. So 
and bring out another birds. Mm -hmm. uh, just gonna pass from there. Okay, so untap, damage from the dib. Yep. He swings for three. I'm gonna. I just uh, let me know if the sweet sequencing uh, sequencing is correct here, but I'm gonna. Sure. I'm gonna berserk it. Okay. Right. No, nothing wrong so far. Declared. Okay. And, yep, and I'm gonna block with this guy. Just to not take the. Okay. Damage. So that, so you'll that's correct. Take right? yeah you you can do it like that so yeah you'll take one less damage because your bird will absorb one. Yeah. But then six mm -hmm. da five damage will still trample over and I'll lose my Serendib. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that works. So you took five and that bird is gone. And now I guess I'll pass. That was my open booster's fork. That was the first time I got to play it. <laughs> yeah, so I saw that video, or the post at least. Yeah. But I'm going to tap this for blue. And at least, yeah. I'm just, I'm going to do that. <laughs> okay, unstable. You know, so I'm attack for a three. I have to take it. Your bird is fat. P-H-A-T. Taking take three. And then I'm gonna cast uh, my own Serendip, taking one from the city. Okay, so you go to six. And then pass from there. Okay, so a draw. Hmm. Let's see. I'll go ahead and time walk using these two. Okay. Yep. And then I'll just go to my next turn. Yeah. And let's see, you have four mana, but I'm not really so much concerned about that anymore. So I'll play an island. And then I'll pass the turn. So the birds goes down, and you take one. Yeah, I, I drop them to two. Cool. Yes, take one, so I five. Um, I'm gonna choose this card. It's gonna attack again. So five. Okay, I will disenchant the uh, unstable. And then that's that's all the effects I'm gonna play. I believe my avoid fate can work this time, <laughs> right? Because it says permanent you control. So and now avoid fate says counters target interrupt or enchantment. Yeah. Well, I guess interrupt now means instant, right? Can counters yeah. only counter spells that target a permanent under your control? Um, yes, that will work. Okay. Okay, so the Avoid Fate, that gets sure. countered. So the Birds is still good for two. The Dib is good for three, which means I take five. Okay. And then pass from there. Tap, draw. Tap two to play an Order of Light Beer. And I'll pass. <clears throat> All right. Hmm. I'm going to go to combat and Okay, I have no response to your combat. I'm berserk. Oh, Serendip. that sucks. 
Let's see. So that'll make him okay. That'll be lethal damage if it all goes through, because that'll be it six. Should be yeah. If it all goes... Um. Six and then this little squeak, but I will bolt the birds. I have another avoid fate. Oh, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> that'll do it. All right. The rest of my hand is all. Planes. Yeah, Sylvan is pretty helpful. So. Oh. Yep. <laughs> that was good. I have him. one mana drain here. Do you even think that's like necessary? Or... Mana drain is a great card. And you've, you've had the mana to play it. And it. the way I like to look at those things is I look at the situations yeah. that were unfolding in the game. If you had drawn a mana drain, would it have been a significant card? I think the answer is yes. So I think it, it, based on that kind of perspective, I think it's worth leaving in the deck. Because, you know, at various points, it would have been a great card to have in your hand, right? Yeah. So let's see. Uh, Gwolfwood says, Edwin, does your deck have Land's Edge 2? Um, the budget version of this deck does, not the powered high-end version of this deck because the the land's edge is a great play but it's very late game and this deck got to be so aggressive with the other cards that the land's edge ended up being a dead card almost all the time because it was so late game Let me check and make sure here. If not, I'm cool for keeping going at least one more game. Yeah, I'll play one more game. Wow, this has been a long stream. It's uh, now past midnight. I didn't yep. even realize it. I'm having such a good time. <laughs> Me too. I almost invited you over today, but then I was like, you know, it's so late, and I just finally finished work and stuff. <laughs> you know, though I didn't actually have to invite you over, I still got to play. <laughs> yeah. Christina actually told me about the stream, so I didn't even know it first. Oh, tell her thank you for and, telling um, you. Let me tell yeah, I did. She helped me set up too. Nice. So you're gonna be on the play, I guess. Um. Yes. Okay. I'll keep it. Uh, I can keep. <clears throat> um. I will play plateau and pass turn. Yep. Done? Yeah, the pass. Strip mine. Ooh, okay. Into soul ring. Mm -hmm. Into fellwar. And nice. I'll pass. Chain it. Other birds. Okay. This use my other one to play scripts. Okay. Set fire, and then I'm gonna pass from there. Okay. Cards in hand. Four. Four cards. Then I will balance four cards in hand. Okay. I'll lose a strip mine. All right. Or actually. So I got to choose one. Um, would that be the best yeah. move? Actually, maybe not. I'll lose. Actually, you know what? I'll cast it like that. 
Okay. And yep, I'll cast it like that and keep that untapped, and I'll lose the plateau. All right, now I'll, um, I'm gonna keep this grave. So. I don't have any creatures. You're right. That balance guy tripped me up. <laughs> All right. And then I'll strip uh, mine your tropical. And let's see. Then I'll play City of Brass and pass. Okay. Let's see. Kevin asked me when I'm going to do this again. Okay, the Scribs, yep, yep, he's out. I pass in there. I can. Um, I'll bolt him. Uh, all right. You have a Pendlehaven? Um, yeah. I'll pass. Okay. Wait, when I bolted... Did I, did I lose? I think I did. I lost a life when I bolted, right? I can't remember if I took a life or not. I'm down one life, but I think that's why, right? It probably is from that, yeah. Okay, yeah. I can't think of any other reason. Okay. All right. Uh, City of Brass. I'm going to lose a life, too. And cast Saren Deep. Ooh. Very good. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to pass from there. Oh. I'll take a damage and play Order of Light Beer, and I'll pass. Oh, so good. Is that, is that good? Yeah, yeah, it's out. I'll attack for six. I take six. Ouch. And I, I lost one for, you know, up. Oh, yeah. Whatever. And pass from there. Hmm. I'll play my own Serendib. Uh, no. And I'll swing for two. All right. Pass turn. Traps on the five, I take one. Swing for five. I'll block. Okay. And then pass from there. Then I'll bolt your Serendib. Oh. All right. That was good. Okay. So, so yeah, pass, pass for turn. Play city, and I'll swing for two. And then I'll play another order of light beer, lose a life. Yeah. And I'll pass. Oh. This one this island. Um, oh yeah, Brian, Brian Weissman signed. And I, to, and I sent it to Jeremy because he met John Finkel, so you know I mailed it to him to get it signed. Uh huh. So. Kind of random, but oh, that's cool. Dude, that is awesome. Yeah. So it's got Weissman and Finkel on it. Yeah. Uh, go to my tax step. Okay. Swing for four. Four. No pump. All right. And then I'll play a Serendib. Ooh. Okay. Go ahead. Yes. From there. Okay. It's not looking. It's looking grim. Grim for me. Damage. 
I go to nine. Yep. They all attack for eight, seven. Okay. No pump. Ooh. All right. <laughs> so you go to three. Yeah. And I'll pass turn. It's going to be the game of the pass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, take one. I'm dead. Let's change it up. Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because, I mean, I could just swing and end it, but this is way more fun. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Sometimes okay. winning isn't the whole, the whole thing, right? One, two, three, yeah. four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I gave Paul a fighting chance. Attack! <laughs> I love that. <laughs> no response? Yeah. Uh, no response. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Nothing's going to help me. Okay, well... Uh, Unless I can cast like creatures at instant speed. <laughs> then I'll play that and play that. And then two chains and a bolt. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there we go. <laughs> That was pretty good. Let's see. Let me switch this over. Switch back to the YouTube channel. Yeah, let people actually see the face of the guy I've been playing for a while. Uh, hey, Internet. <laughs> that's Paul. <laughs> Dude, it's good to see you again. You too, man. Oh, I dropped something. <laughs> we'll play again someday. You should have been like, oh, shit. <laughs> Make everybody be like, oh god, what happened? <laughs> Is Paul alright? <laughs> Let me see what yeah, some of these comments are. Um so Kevin King said he'll put together a deck for next time. Oh awesome, Kevin. That'd be great. And Kevlar111 says, Hey Evan, loved your magic storage videos. Question, where did you get those deep drawers you hold your extra cards in? The drawers are from IKEA. They're called the Malm series. All these weird, you know, <laughs> names that these guys have, Swedish names. It's M-A-L-M is the name of them. And actually, I discovered after a while, you want something like that. If the drawers were very thin, then the problem with very thin drawers is if they don't pull out all the way, you just can't even get to the cards in the back. Those drawers are really tall, which allow you to actually pull them out and then be able to access the cards that are in the back of the drawers. Another thing is... Um, if the drawer rollers are not really sturdy, you know, when you have a lot of cards in, they're really heavy. So you have to have something that has pretty decently sturdy rollers and then a lot of headspace to be able to actually get in. So that Malm series from Ikea, even though Ikea is not super expensive, it turned out to work just great, actually. Oh, I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to Paul. He stealthily just walked away. Okay, so then Joe B said, let's see. Edwin, I've put together several of your budget decks. They're really fun. Thank you. Um, it would be awesome to play a few games sometime. I just need to get a camera set up. Joe B, that would be great. Go ahead and set up a camera, and then we will uh, we'll play next time. Uh, and Paul said, thank you for the matches. And yeah, that's going to be it for me tonight, guys. That was really great. Thank you, everybody, for joining. I had a really great time. Um, I sorry, I should have lined up uh, some matches at the very beginning so you guys wouldn't have to just sit there and see me being like, somebody please play. <laughs> I'm sure that was not as much fun. But anyways, we did get to get some games in. So thankfully that all ended up working out. And it seems like the internet issues are fixed because I didn't hear about anybody complaining about lag or anything like that. So thank you everyone for joining. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for people joining. I had a great time, everybody. And uh, also, thank you for that super chat. We made, what was it? We made eight bucks, $8.12 um, from, was it Nick King? I think that was the guy that did it. So yeah, that will go to Make-A-Wish Foundation and I will match it. So everyone have a great night. So bye everybody.